Today, uh, we've got Devin Tyler, who's part of the JD Sports brand team. We'll be interviewing rap icon Rhapsody. Uh, I'm not going to waste any more time. I'll let them do all of the talking. Um, they're going to be joining us right now, so thank you guys for tuning in. Somebody who is, in my eyes, a legend, person, one of my favorite artists in the game just in general. She has had such a career. Her career is outstanding. Her her underground career, her career now, the Grammy nom she's had, the BET award she's had. She's one of the best lyricists in the game. And continues to do so. So today is a pleasure and honor to have Rhapsody on Community Voices. Rhapsody, come on out. Keep it going, keep it going, keep it going. Good morning, everyone. How are y'all? Good. Happy Juneteenth. Happy yes. Juneteenth. Happy Juneteenth, for sure, for sure. I am, like I said, I am, I've been telling y'all today, this is an honor, I'm blessed, I'm so happy to be here, and I just really appreciate you spending that time to join us in a day and do this with us. Oh, it was an easy yes. I mean, you know, we're here early, the Juneteenth. Sam. Yeah. Love it. So I'm gonna go ahead and get things kicked off. Um, I think one thing that we have in common, I believe, is our love for hip hop and music. And, and I mean that in the sense of not just how, you know, how we enjoy it, but like the way that it allows us to feel things, express ourselves, and to kind of, you know, relate to a certain artists or emotion. Can you kind of take me back to, you know, what was it like for you to kind of like get into rapping and start your rap career? And at the same time, how was it to eventually grow into the confidence of, you know, expressing yourself and being vulnerable as people come over your, over your music over time? Um, being confident and getting into it. I started late, right? Uh, I knew at a young age that, you know, I love that I want to be a part of this culture. I wanted to be a part of the business. I wanted to uh, experience everything like I saw my favorites doing on TV and radio. But I didn't pursue it actively until college, right? Um, and I think it was a thing of just growing up in a country town and not being exposed to it and not knowing how to approach it and if I was even good enough and I was already somewhat shy. So, um, you know, what what got me into it and being comfortable, I feel like, was the same thing as how hip hop started. Mm. It was something we did for fun, right? right? And I was in college and I was with friends and. It wasn't a thing of you gotta be great or we expect you to write ahead or you know, it was just like, yo, let's just have fun, right? And that was my first taste of it. But once I got a bite of it, it I couldn't oh. let it go, right? I couldn't let it go. And then, you know, naturally it was a thing of like just exploring the creativity of, of words. But when it comes to being vulnerable in it, I still like I feel like at this stage in my career, I'm just starting to really do that, right? Yeah. And um, I, I tell people, like, looking back and listening to my music, if I made really think vulnerable for myself, most of the time I was hitting really deep in metaphors and, and really, if you didn't know how to break the bars down, if you weren't a big on lyricism, you probably wouldn't get what I was really saying. Right. And I would uh, always rap from an outer perspective, shine a light on everybody else. Like, you know, I want to be a voice for the voiceless. And at this stage, it's like I have to turn the light on myself now, right? And I, I thought about like my favorite artists that I connect with, they're the most vulnerable and free. And, and it's just like, this is me, I'm human. And I was like, that's the music I connect with because now I see myself in music. Um, so yeah, it's, it's been a journey, but I feel like uh, if music is really a snapshot of our life, then the music evolves and we evolve. Right. So I had I was late at evolving in that in that way. <laughs> but then you kind of, but then at the same time you're kind of on time, right? Because as as you grow, your audience grows. You know, the same people who listen to you when they were, you know, in their twenties are getting older. Now we want to hear something different. Now we relate to something different, which your growth works into that benefit. So it kind of works out in that perfect timing. So I love that. Yeah, I guess so. We're grown over here. <laughs> it's 
and that project has grown. I let my nephew hear it. I was like, what you think? He was like, yeah, I said, it's grown, ain't it? He was like, yeah. <laughs> He's 15. I love it. I'm just like, now I'm excited to hear it. Now I really want to hear it. Now, I want to um, dive into, um, I, I, I guess I'm a big fan of yours personally. You did an interview recently with Idea Generation. And in there, you mentioned, uh, you talked about how important it is to not let law and odds discourage you. And you talked about how, you know, sometimes to achieve the things that you want to achieve, it takes sacrifice. I would love, you know, when you look back at your career, I talked about the underground piece, the Grammy noms, you know, even the BET Awards. Can you kind of tell me what it's like to practice those kind of things in your life? How, how did you overcome that and have the confidence to, you know, not get discouraged when you felt like you weren't getting enough, you know, recognition or things weren't doing what they were supposed to do, or you know, how you had to continue to sacrifice to get to this point that you're at today? It was never a time I was not discouraged. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I have to be honest because you know, I'm human, but I'm a tough cookie. That's <laughs> the difference, right? And one thing I learned, you know. As cliche as it may sound, like fall down seven times, get up eight, or you know, anything that uh, you want that you know you see people have, it's not easy. It's not supposed to be. That everybody will do it. Right. So the only thing that separates you from somebody that is or is not successful is the successful person kept going, mm -hmm. and that's something I have to remind myself. And you have to get out of your mind that everybody's tongue is the same, because okay. it's not. You know, some people are going to go on their journey and it's going to mature at different times, it's going to evolve at different times. You know, even watching Wakanda, the older lady, she kind of had 80s, but she's acting. Yeah, that still counts, you know? <laughs> oh, for sure. So, you know, that's what it was. But I definitely had times I got discouraged, and I think uh, a lot of it, too, was me trying to fit into what the industry or the fans or whatever deem that success what that look like. And you have to define that for yourself first, right? To be at even peace with your timing and your journey. Um, and I think that's what a lot of times was the root of my frustration or, or the hardships. Because really like, you know, every win is, is a success as long as you continue to go. I tell everybody with every project, my number one goal is how did I grow from the last one? That's you a good know, goal. Saying? Yeah, like, even if it's just a small way, like this one is connection for me, right? Another one may be, you know, hooks. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, it's area of like progress. Yeah, it's how we're progressing. So um, I definitely have my hard days, but again, I knew what I wanted to do. I knew if I wanted to be successful, this is what came for it. And you have to sacrifice for it. And two, I, have, I had a strong village around me. Right. You know, you have to have, uh, you know, people around you too that, are gonna keep you uplifted and just remind you. You have to be that for yourself, but it, right. it helps to have a support system. Yeah, that balance of having both around you, being it for yourself and then having it around you, which is sometimes harder to achieve you know, at times than it seems, but it, it'll, it'll grow as long as you kind of know. Once you find it in yourself first, like you said, then it's kind of easier to put that village around you and you should be in that village, so I love Indeed. that. And two, the, the people that help you find it. Yes, yeah, right. like Even in this, this, this season, the last three years, I've gone through a lot of evolving right but i i know that uh that was sparked by two of my closest friends mm -hmm. and they had to be a mirror for, for me right and i had to even allow myself to see my reflection in what they were telling me so you know that was it too that's deep that's real that's a mirror for sure right there now i want to ask one thing that i've been i've heard you mention i know you tell my past interviews but i love that storytelling that learning and i also do my research heavily even though i'm a big fan but I remember one time you mentioned that uh, I talked about the importance of like culture over everything. And it kind of struck me because, you know, I think when you listen to your music and when you speak to it, some of the stories that we tell, uh, culture can be looked at in different ways. You know, there's like the current culture that we're in. But then I think, you know, it being Juneteenth, I think it also, like, you know, you think about the culture of our ancestors, what they've had to go through, and the thing that they've seen, and how sometimes those traumas or stories and things like that seep into our families now. Um, I would love to know when you hear or when you think of culture over everything, what does that mean to you today? For me today, it means authenticity, right? Um, for me, like, I always spoke to that from a, a standpoint of like hip hop culture and what that stood for. For me, it was always about individuality and showing up, you know, as yourself and honoring that part. That's what hip hop was, you know, it was, it made space for us all to be diverse and be our unique selves and celebrate that. Right. And if you do that, then that's always home, right? And even tying into, you know, our, our culture in general, I feel like, you know, it's things again that are passed down from my ancestors. And, you know, that's all a part 
of our makeup of who we are and, how we, and what we do and, and it should be celebrated so you know that's what it is just bring all those pieces of you know things that you're naturally born with and bring with it or, or you know but if it's sign years to get into that but also the things you know in life that you've gone through and experienced that have shaped you as a human being because you know all of us are different based on the experiences that we have right um you know and yeah it's just about not dimming a light to anybody mm -hmm. right and that's what culture over everything is to me like yo show up as your true self but just put yourself first over everything you know and and that's that's the root of it all you know that's how you're good with yourself when you deal with yourself you'll be able to be good to everybody else i, I love that i love it. And, and i love it because i think it sounds great too at the same time that's a hard sometimes it's a hard practice to wake up every day and be like you know what like this is the affirmation i'm kind of setting down for myself in order so i can grow continue to be that person so like i appreciate you even sharing that because that's something that has to be daily practice too like you have to constantly learn that every day yeah hey you go follow those short i'm saying i'm saying i'm saying what you get back 100 percent. now i'm gonna uh i mentioned juneteenth now i want to i'm gonna read this juneteenth piece of my card because i'm somebody who for me you know, Juneteenth, it isn't a newer thing, but the celebration of it, the understanding of it, and the way that we acknowledge it today, we see it continue to grow, continues to be, um, you know, seen in a higher level, a federal way, you know, things like that. And I want to make sure that when I mention what Juneteenth is, that I'm being accurate, and that I'm not, you know, getting things in my head, mixed up or missing facts. So, for those who aren't familiar with Juneteenth, or don't understand, you know, kind of what the importance is, or what the history of it is, Juneteenth is the holiday where we acknowledge, embrace, and honor the final freedom of our ancestors who were the last to be finally freed from um, being enslaved in Galveston Bay, Texas. Uh, today is to observe how all people can continue to uplift and support the black community, celebrate the opportunities in our community of today, and look inside ourselves to see where we can grow uh, internally and externally in our community as well. And I just mentioned, you know, Juneteenth is like a newer thing for me as far as, you know, how I honor it, how I celebrate it, even as a, as a black man, you know, understanding, you know, what that holiday meant, because it's kind of tough, right? You're like, man, like, there are people who didn't even know that they were free. Like, that's, that's, that's tough to, like, remember on these holidays, but at the same time, it's like, you know, but they were free. They were eventually, uh, you know, like, like able to kind of have a, somewhat of a better life and have a better life in general. And, uh, and then growing up in Texas, like, it's even tough for me. It's like, damn, like, we're, the South is still South, but, like, it's tough. But... <laughs> <laughs> but I would I would love to kind of just know you know how, how did you kind of first learn about Juneteenth and kind of what does it mean like for you today and how you honor it? I'm gonna be real because I'm just a real person. <laughs> I don't I don't I don't have I have a terrible recollection of time. Everything's just burning me. So I I can't honestly say like when I remember actually hearing about Juneteenth. Sure. Right. I always had this awareness of like oh okay you know I don't understand what you think. What's this? Is twenty twenty three? <laughs> Maybe 2015? I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe a little bit for that. Um, I'm not going to say I learned about like, I'm not going to hide for sure. that. But I don't know. More within the last eight to ten years, maybe. Um, you know, but even like now that it's recognized as a, a national holiday, and um, there's an artist by the name of Nico Berman who I'm working with, and he was one of the group of people that helped. Uh, push forward so it could be recognized. Oh, that's fire. Um, so, you know, uh, how do I celebrate it? I'm still learning, right? It's, it's a newer thing, yeah. It's a newer thing, but for me, I'm just like, I celebrate being black every day, right? Back, <laughs> but right. It's, it's good for us to like, just have a moment we collectively really doing it mm -hmm. all together, um, you know? So, I'm still tr trying to figure out like, how you know yeah <laughs> but I, I celebrate it every day like everywhere i go i'm like Yo, where, where we at <laughs> where, where, where are people that with a, sure. with a party like you know whether it's in my music or you know how i dress or you know even um organizations that i choose to show up uh for or even not today but you know i was with my stylist she was like what designers you like i want all black mm. you know that's that's how I celebrate it in yeah. those ways. Um, but we like a good party. I heard about the Fort Greene event in Brooklyn yesterday. You know, black people love a good cookout, a good community time. So, um, but yeah, but I think, you know, just whether it's Juneteenth or every day, just continue to learn more about who we are, our history, continue to tell that. 
um, to support each other, our businesses. Um, yeah, and, and uh, however you feel like you can put, uplift the community, you know, and you need to be proud of yourself. And you know, within, within that, first off, I'll say, say, I know you said you didn't get a stylist today, but you still dress it, so let's not, you know, downplay how you got to go to that. I'm saying, we respect it. Um, but I, lo I love what you said because, you know, I think that is kind of the thing for many of us, right? Like, we're still trying to understand. I mean, we're just recognizing it better. Already. So, like, of course, it's probably newer to a lot of people, even the younger people, will probably like, you know, what part of black history is this, you know, this, you know in, in, this, in this piece? But, like, I think, too, the, the daily practice of it, right? Like, Juneteenth isn't about, hey, you know, it's that weekend, let's turn up, let's buy black, let's do all that. It's like, no, like, what are we doing every day? What are we doing in July? What are we doing in August? What are we doing to, you know, help other brands, to help other people, help other people in our community and uplift them and, and, and be support every day? The same thing with black history. Like, we don't just do this from the first year, 28. How are we going to do this for the whole 365? So I think the way that you address that is like perfect. It's like how, how do we practice that daily for the community, for others, and things like that. So I think you're already on track to be support in a great way. So I love that. Uh, I want to ask to. We talked about it a little bit earlier. Um, the importance of kind of have like a nurturing, nurturing circle around you. Um, you know, Ninth has played a big role in your career. Um, you know, and as a fan, I've, I've seen you work with Cole, uh, Kendrick, Anderson. In fact, so many people. And I, I think, you know, from the outside looking in, I, I think it's, you know, of course it's your skill and your talent, how you go bar for bar, how you can, you, you hang, not can, you hang with the best of them. But that, I think at the same time, it's like there's a different level of respect that they have for you. There's like a way that you carry yourself and the way that like you, the circle in the company that you keep, I think is very important. It speaks to how, who you have featured with you, who you have worked with you. I would love to just kind of have you dive into speaking into that, you know, having that nurturing circle around you and how that now you have that, how you are that for others. Yeah, um, again, like I said, I think in anything you want to do, it's important to have that nurturing circle, like, especially like if you're in the business, right? Mm -hmm. I came in with the love of the culture, a love of the art, you know, I love the storytelling, all of that, but the business is completely really different. different yeah. And to have not only a nurturing circle, but an informed circle, mm -hmm. and both Ninth Wonder and Young Guru, um, you know, they prepared me for it, right? Even as, again, I was still involved, evolving, but they gave me a certain awareness, like I was talking about yesterday, uh, right, you're not putting out any music to you define your mind first, mm -hmm. right? Um, or, you know, just, just the things to watch out for, or, you know, how important it is to build relationships. Um, you know, it was just a lot of small things. Um, you know, I hear a lot of, uh, not so great story about some artists and experience in the business. Right. But as me and I say, I necessarily don't have any, any bad experiences, you know. Did everything go perfect? No, but if I worked at Burger King, everything wouldn't go perfect there either, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> For sure. Um, so I could, I could say I've had a, a really good career, but that's because I had two people around me that prepared for it. And even on those hard days, you know, they allowed me to have my day where, you know, I might soak, I might be frustrated, and it was like, all right, suck that. it up. Like, yeah. You wanted the best. Now go in the booth and perform. You know, so you always has. It's like you always want that wind beneath your wings. You know, to kind of help carry you to you. Like yo, you on your own now. You just catch your drift. We gave you all the lessons. So you know, it was. It was. That's what it was. You know, it was just uh, around love and um, and now that I know all that I know, you know, um, I'm more informed. Uh, I'm more skilled. I could pass that along, right? Whether it's Ruben Vincent, Nico Brem. Um, you know, there are even a lot of newer artists that are coming up now, especially newer artists on Rock Nation, of course, that's family, and they'll text me and they're like, well, rap, this is how I'm feeling about this. What's your advice? What should I do with this? Yo, what do you think about this? And it, I, I'm happy that I'm in a space to, to give them perspective. Right. I never want to tell you what to do, but I'm going to give you perspective. Um, and allow you to make your decision and, and just educate you. And it's, it's good to be able to be in that position to give back. Because, you know, as it's a fun competitive sport, but it's a community too. Yeah. You know, it's a family. Um, and if I know I succeeded because I had people there that supported me. So it's only right for me to pass the board. Right. You know, that's right. what we're supposed to do. Um, bridge the gap. We ain't supposed to burn the bridge. And it's disheartening too when I see like younger younger artists and legends going back and forth. Like, what is it? Like, yeah. What are we really doing? So backwards. 
Yeah, so we're not on that movement because that's not what hip hop is about. Right. You know, um, hip hop is all inclusive. Hip hop is young, old, in between. You know, it's it's like uh, like in black culture, uh, in African culture, the circle. The circle is to give and receive. Mm -hmm. I was given, so I got to receive. I got. I was received, so I had to give it back. Right. right. Um, so yeah. You, you took the words right out of my mouth. I was gonna say that because, like, you know, the, the the whole point of this life and this journey is it just to retain the information and then it's to like, who else can I pass this on to so that it continues to evolve, evolve and things like that. So that circle piece is like it's pivotal, pivotal. What, what are we holding on to information for? That's exactly. The, that's the most selfish thing I think you could do, and that that shows an insecurity in you, right. insecurity and ego. Like, what's gonna happen if you give the information away? You are you, like nobody can clone you. They can be copied, but they can't be you. So what are we holding on the information for? You know? Yep, yeah, think about it. Think about it, you're saying. Loop it up, for sure, for sure. Now, you know, with this being Community Voices, we continue to do the work for the community. You know, I know we're highlighting Juneteenth as well, but you know, we continue to do this. It's a good thing. We also continue to do past June when we're in July, August, September, continuing to do the work, and we're making sure we do that as well. But we donate 15, uh, 15K to the Legends Do Live organization. To those who aren't familiar with Legends, Live, Legends Do Live organization, um, heroes do you remember, but legends never die. Back. Legends Do Live Foundation is a nonprofit organization that focuses on equipping, funding, disadvantaged youth and communities through workshop programs and community engagement. Um, I would love for you to kind of speak to uh, the organization of choice. At the same time, I would love to, you know, hear that in a way, it reminds me of like your art too, the music that you put out in that way too. So I would love to know like, you know, why you chose that organization and how you kind of feel that that purpose that they're serving kind of aligns with some of like the tones in your music or some of the like bigger purposes or intentions in your music. Yeah, um, even I think how I, how I got there, right? 2020, I've always, you know, been about social justice and the 2020, of course, you know, that was a big, big moment, year. right? Right, and I did a lot of work with um, Until Freedom and Tamika Mallory and, you know, protests and trying not talking to kids. And I was um, I was talking to one of my good friends in the business one day, like, yo, come support this rap or whatever. And he was like, yeah, I got you. He was like, but rap, how we really, really make a difference is we got to touch the kids and it's got, it's got to be through education, right? Yeah. It's like, we gotta reach the pre people out of prison and then education and it, it just made me think, I was like, man, that's so right. Like, not to say it's not for nothing. We can march all day, blah, blah, oh, yeah. blah. But the real change is preparing the next leaders for tomorrow, right? right. Um, and so Jaron Small and Douglas uh, uh, Johnson, who run Legends Do Live, <laughs> I like to call them reading for rap, but they hit me one day um, to do um, a talk with this class, I want to say it was in Chicago, and it was a girls' school, all girls, and you know, they would learn through hip hop, right? And their program um, under that is uh, called Reading with the Rapper, where they'll right. choose a rapper, choose an album, of lyrics, and kids get to break down the lyrics. They learn metaphor, they learn simply, they learn comprehension, they learn language, you know, and they told me the percentages of how much in ELA the percentages in reading went up, right? And I was just astonished mm -hmm. and blown away. So um, I did this class and I was like, man, this is so dope and powerful. And we stayed in touch and I would support other things they did. And one day they were like, can you be a board member? And I said, I would love to. And so um, I'm going back to my hometown in my high school and I'm starting my own curriculum, right? And, you know, I just thought it was so important that they were doing and using hip hop to educate kids and to learn and so many other things. Even outside of reading, you get to teach history. Um, I know some kids that go to YouTube and learn math through, through songs and I was like, yo, that's so powerful, but that's something I want to invest in. So, you know, that's why I chose them. I was like, oh, my next question too is like a memorable moment. And that's like big, but I'm like, give it up if you don't mind for like that whole, you know, that. And I, what I love about that is one thing, the work is important no matter where you go. So you from Chicago, to Texas, to Carolina, like it's important in general, but it says a lot that you say, hey, I'm also going back, and I'm gonna make sure the hometown is also taken care of in the same way, I'm seeing the impact that it has. Like I said, it's that community piece, like, you know, there's community locally, but it's also like the community back at home. The people you see the, where you grew up and what shape you made you, how you can give back to that. It's better than how you know you leave it, or better than how you found it in a way. So I, I love that. Absolutely, that, and that was another thing because I thought about when I was in school there, right? 
small country town and you know the, the counselors they come in like let's test you you test the high map you graded the county right i'm like okay you know what I'm, I'm gonna be in the county because that's what he said and it's nobody asks you what are you passionate about yeah exactly do, right and if you say like i want to i want to play video games and make a check or i want to play video games i want to be a director right? You know, I used to that your parents were kind of like, I don't see any no support for that. But now there there's no exposure to exactly. even know that that's even a job you can do. So that was another thing where I wanted to bring that to uh to my school and even have a class where you learn music production, you learn about sound engineering. Everybody ain't gotta be a rapper. Right. You can make you can mix the record too. You, exactly. can, you can promote the shows or whatever, but I, I wanted them to have more exposure. So yeah, legends do live. I love that. That's all. That's so, and it, it, it feels so important because I think that's like a part of how I was like on my journey to like, you don't know what you know until you know it. And it sounds like super basic, but like, if you don't meet that one person or have that one resource, then you may not even know that was there, which could hinder you from, you know what I mean? So the importance of shutting that out. So I, I, I love that. And before I move on to actually one of our last questions, I want to respect your time too. Um, you know, I know you mentioned that experience with, with that with the school with the kids. I would love to know, would you say is that one of your most like memorable moments when it comes to like giving back and having an impact in the community, or would you say it's another standout moment where you're like, I that really that stuck with me. I think about that all the time. Yes, yeah, it's, it's a standout moment. I don't think I just have one that's like because I think every every encounter I have, you know, yeah, with whatever organization or time I'm spending giving back to to whoever is memorable for me. I'm gonna be real, like I could be driving down the street and somebody's got the sign up and I'm just like here. That's always a memorable moment for me. Like, God bless you, sister. Stay safe, brother. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, you know, just showing up for people in all kind of ways. Like, I don't forget any of it. You know? But if I had to say one of my favorite moments, <laughs> um, it was, I think it just redefined my purpose, right? And we allowed me to be South Africa. And I tell the story all the time, I'm probably gonna tell it. No. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I mean, just just being an inspiration I did it today. Yeah, I love it. and it's like like you were in South Africa doing that stuff. Like the way that you can just like go, like the impact that we can have not just in our communities and outside of it. Like even that is inspirational within that. So I, I I love that. Now I want to mention this. In the last question. Uh, actually, you don't mind open the floor for any questions. If that's cool. Um, August is the 50th anniversary of Bob. You know, you were inspired by the greats, the legends, Lauren Hill, Queen Latifah, MC Light. And if you look at today's music, granted there's still great inspiration too, you're in a place where your work, when you showcase the way you perform, your skills, your talent, yeah, you're there for today's generation. You're that level, you're at that level of MC that people respect and see and and, and reach out to and reach out to it and things like that. I would love to kind of just know how does it feel to now be that for others? And at this point in your career, going into this new journey, you know, talk about how you know this new upcoming project is gonna be more vulnerable. What is it like to have hip hop still feed your spirit at this point in your career? And that's a loaded question to so take your yeah. time. Um. I'm in a very honest state. So the first part of the question, I'm gonna be real, it's hard for me to see outside of myself. Mm. And I don't see my impact in the way that other people see it. I feel like I'm nowhere near at the level of impact that you know I would still wanna be. Yeah. Right? Um, so that's even hard for me to see myself in that position. Mm. To be honest, to be completely honest. And um but when people tell me, like, you know, sometimes uh, the family at Rock would be like, you know, because you're here, a lot of uh, upcoming women want to be here because you're here. And I'm just like, for real? <laughs> like, you know, I have an idea. But it's, it's, it's I'm, I'm humbled and honored. I'm grateful. That's, it's, it fills me with gratitude that I'm even in the space to be a light for somebody else because there were so many before me that were like, and my only thing is I just want to widen the door for more of us to come through, right? Um, and more of us that want to operate and I just be who we are to show that there is space for you. In the same way Lauren and Light and Missy and Queen Latifah showed me that there was space for me here, I just want to be another of a lot of representation that there are space for you. So it's, 
it's, it's humbling for me, it's honoring, it's agile. I don't, I don't ever take it lightly. It, it really fills me and it, it keeps me going, mm-hmm. right? Um, those those things are better than, you know, any Grammy or any other accolades. For sure. Right? To, to know that even if it's one person that you had an impact on somebody that you potentially changed their life. Um, I don't know, that's the best I got for that first part of the answer. <laughs> and how does it feel knowing hip hop still beats my spirit? Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, one, it, it lets me know that I didn't allow myself to be jaded. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't see hip hop, I never think of it not feeding my spirit. It's culture. Right. I look at hip hop the same way I look at being black. Like, it's just a part of who I am. So for me to not even think that could that can feed me anymore. I can't even <laughs> I can't even really imagine and fathom that. Yeah. Um, you know, but it's it's beautiful to see that it's fifty years and it's still evolving and it's still the most influential genre in the world. Culture. Mm-hmm. Culture in because, the world, right? Yeah. Um, you know, so that's the exciting part that the culture evolves in the same way we do. And there's always space for us to learn and try to explore, not be boxed in. Like, right. You know, um, Alicia Keys told me, close your eyes, open the window to see, and it's infinite possibility. And that's what hip hop is, right? Um, so I'm just excited to see, like, you know, I was going to continue to, to go, like, they could keep the AI stuff. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The about, I agree with that wholeheartedly. You know, let the, let the dead rest in peace, <laughs> please. <laughs> But you know, all the other things are so fun. That's so fun. And as far as I had a whole conversation about that last week, just like, man, like, nobody want to hear that really. Nobody want to, no. But yeah, (laughs) I totally love that. And and I think too, I'm glad, I know you said that's the best answer you have for it at this time, but I'm glad that I even get to ask it because that allows you to to think, like, allows to sit with you. Now you you have an opportunity to reflect on it. I mean, it's hard to, you know, you are hostile, I know you're humble, like, you know, I know you, you I'm move a certain way, but, <laughs> but like to me, I think too, like, and maybe, maybe it's because I'm also seeing people as a fan. So I'm hearing music differently, I'm, I'm seeing people go forward, I'm hearing, I'm hearing what they are going for, I'm hearing like the sounds and things like that. So maybe it's also too like, where we're also acknowledging or seeing those experiences from, you know what I mean, so. Oh, you mean from that, that, that perspective? I mean, it, I, I think we're from both, but like, oh, to me, okay. like, I feel like, I'm, when I'm looking at the 50th anniversary, I'm like, you know, I think about how we were there 25 years, and we're thinking about like the, the artist that I mentioned earlier. I'm like, yeah. to me, I see you on that today. When we talk about 50th. That's where you are. Like you have set a bar, you have set a tone. We talk about all the great. So maybe it's just me. I don't think it is, but to me, you you set the, you set the bar. You you up there, and you can continue to be able to continue to go on, especially depending on the new album, like which I'm hearing that is fire. But who told you that? I'm just sipping talking. Street sipping talking, I'm saying. What? Where have I been at? I mean, I'm, I'm happy with it. That's all. I, I never go into a project with any expectations. Mm-hmm. My favorite um, quote is Andy Warhol. It's, it's up to the artist to make the art and put it in the world, into the world side, if it's good or bad, and while you're deciding, you're on to the next, right? But all I can give is like, my true authentic self and what space I'm in in it. I literally heard a quote the other day. I was listening to it out the other day and it was like, nobody asked you to be perfect in this world, we just asked you to be honest. And yes. I was like, oh, like, yes. that's so, like, a daily thing to remember every day, so, but I could be a big talk with you all day. <laughs> but I appreciate you very much for joining us this episode for me. I do want to open the floor if anybody has any, any uh, other questions. You can do like one or two if you have any questions. You got one you want to ask one too? I saw the face, I don't know. All right, cool, cool. I'll take that. I'm by Thank you, Deb. <laughs> okay, hi. Um, really quick, um, we talked about your impact in music, and you are a legend in the movie. I mean, you've done so much, but I wanted to ask you, what would you like your legacy to be? Once you put the mic down, and you know, all the accolades, what would you like your legacy to be? That is such a it's a good question. Good morning. What's your name? What's up? I'm Tara. How you doing, Tara? Thank you for being here. Um, what do I want my legacy to be? Um, I, I think I just I wanted to be somebody that came in and was herself and inspired other people to be themselves. 
at the end of the day. You know, she dressed how she wanted to dress, she said what she wanted to say, she wrapped over whatever she wanted to wrap, she didn't conform, right? And, um, yeah, that's, that's it.